Welcome. This is Thursday, the 29th of October, and this is Simply the Truth live with me, Doug Harris. Thank you for joining us because you are as important as those of us here in the studio. Do remember all things Simply the Truth can be found on the website at simplythetruth.revelationtv.com. You can find all about upcoming programs. You can find details of contacting uh, us for previous programs. And if you can leave messages there. So if you're watching a repeat and you thought, I really wanted to say something, go on to that page. You've got the place to, uh, to, to leave your comment, to leave your question, and we'll get round to answering it just as soon as we can so that's what we're uh, here for to really communicate truth as simply as possible and today well of course we're at the end of halloween at the end of october aren't we and halloween is just round the corner it's coming saturday we'll have the trick-or-treaters we'll have the pumpkins we'll have all of this stuff and so we looking at today at the whole area of the occult and Halloween and we're going to look at a little more than Halloween we're getting on to Halloween a little bit later on uh, in the program but what we want to do as far as uh, today is concerned is also we're going to be talking with Laura Laura Maxwell Laura good afternoon Hi, Doug. thank you for coming down obviously with uh, an accent like that you, you you certainly were born but you also still live in Scotland thank you for joining us my pleasure yeah Thanks. great good uh, laura was a former spiritualist and uh, we'll be starting by delving into a little bit of her story to just to see where uh, w what th this can lead to and and uh, where we've got to be careful of what we go where we go how we do things and then uh, michael no stranger to the program michael michael cummings thank, thank you, you for Dan. coming again lovely to be here thanks yeah. for inviting me always joy to see your smiling face thank you very much you know you're, you're involved in the deliverance ministry but you know you expect people to go around being all sort of mm, sober and underneath it all but you never seem to be michael well we're assured of victory because the battle belongs to the lord Amen. and he's always victorious that's right he sure is he, he never stops does no, he no never stops. we sometimes get it a bit wrong yeah. but he don't that's exactly <laughs> right then. if we rely on him we can't go far wrong. yeah and uh, so michael will be uh, joining in especially the, the second part of the discussion of Halloween but I'll be jumping in and out uh, as, as we talk uh, about Laura's testimony so let's get right into it today uh, time always flies by on these programs we start off with two hours and it goes so quickly so I don't want to waste too much time at the beginning Laura tell me um, and, and our viewers a little bit about your early life what it was like growing up etc Basically, my early childhood was just a sort of a typical childhood, really. Um, we didn't really get into the supernatural until a bit later on. But certainly as a child, I did have some psychic experiences. And my mother had as a child, too. And it wasn't really until I was just before I was a teenager or a young teenager that we started to delve into the supernatural things. Mm. You, you said you, even as a child you had some psychic experiences. What what did you mean by that? Just really like dreams and that would come true and the sort of a deja vu type experiences, premonitions and that kind of thing. Well, there weren't a lot then, as I say, it did develop later. Right. And they didn't worry you? You didn't have any fear or any problems with such things like that when you were growing up? Not really, no. Quite the opposite, really. Just always really had a hunger and a fascination with such things. So didn't maybe a little bit scared the same way people are if they watch a, a frightening movie. Mm -hmm. um, a little bit scared, but you still watch it anyway. <laughs> yeah, so. yeah, yeah. When um, when did you first start getting involved in spiritualism, and and why did you start getting involved in spiritualism? I think I would have been about fourteen. Um, because my mother, she was actually in the park walking the dogs and a local medium approached her and got chatting to her and he said that he sensed her potential to be a medium so he invited her to the spiritualist church he attended in Glasgow and she went along and, and after a while I started going too. Mm -hmm. So how old were you? 14? I think about, about 14, 14, yeah. 14 15. And what? 
what did you think of it? I really thought it was wonderful, um, fascinating, um, very, very quickly believed in it all, um, just because of because of the signs and wonders were so credible and the information given mm. was so credible. I mm. um, certainly didn't think it was a hoax or anything like that. Right. You, now, you, you never had any biblical or Christian input really in, into your life up until that point, had you? Um, I mean, did you ever go to Sunday school or anything like that? No, very minimal, I suppose, at primary school. I think I went to Sunday school once or twice. Um, I did have a, a Catholic friend who told me that you shouldn't be into spiritualism, but she wasn't really sure why. She didn't really know how huh. to explain to me why, so I sort of disregarded what she said, really. Yeah. Yeah, so you had nothing in you as a, 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 as a person that, um, in any way, would um, w would be a natural check a against spiritualism. And and the people were nice, and as you say, things seemed to be right. Things seemed to happen. So, did you embrace it fully at that point? Was your mother embracing it fully as, as well at that point? Yeah, she was embracing it more fully than myself, perhaps because I was at school and I was busy at school and obviously I had friends to go out with as well. I, I did always have the back of my mind, I'm definitely going to pursue this. Mm. When I'm a little bit older, I really want to be a medium. Mm. And certainly my mother, she wanted to be a medium too and mm. she was forging ahead with it all. Mm. Michael, maybe I could just ask you this because I, I think we've got an interesting point here. Um, uh, Laura didn't have any spiritual background, any Christian background at that point. Or, and although in those days many would have done. We're, we're living in days where it's perfectly possible not to go to Sunday school, not to go to church, not to hear anything relevant in school, etc. Do you think that is why more people are getting involved in the occult? In other words, they're seeing something there that... They're, a, they had no reason to doubt uh, and, and, and no questions about because they, you know, and, and, and B, they, they say, well, why not? What's wrong with it? Well, if we look around at the media, TV, films, books, one of the best selling books are the Harry Potter series of books. I remember my mother taking me to the cinema when I was very small to see Fantasia, the Walt Disney oh, film. Oh, right. And there's a famous scene called The Sorcerer's Apprentice <laughs> where Mickey Mouse conjures up the buckets and the brooms and they march to classical music. Yeah, I can't yeah, remember yeah. what music it was. But I remember being terrified and getting under the seat. I was about five or six years of age. I don't think children have that fear of the occult mm. now. There's programs, angels and demons. There's witches. There's all sorts of things on the TV now. And along with computer games, I think something happened in the 80s in this country when the film E.T. came out. Mm. Because Spielberg, as you know, the extraterrestrial came to the earth and to hide him from the authorities, he was done up as a, you know, going to a Halloween party. And Halloween became cool in the minds of people in this country. And, you know, the devil is very, very clever because if he stood in New Malden High Street dressed as a Trinosaurus Rex, none of us would go near him because mm. we know we'd be in trouble. But when he comes, I call Halloween and mediums and spiritualism and all this sort of thing the subtle deceptions of Satan because mm. they're very subtle because to the outward appearance it all seems very harmless and good fun. Mm. And spiritualism in particular is something that people who have got low self-esteem, lack of confidence, who have suffered in life, it gives them a spiritual awakening and they, it boosts them up, mm. if you mm. like. Do, do you think also then there is a lesson for the church. I mean, I mean the, the, the well-worn phrase, prevention is better than cure, yes. I would say is very, very relevant here. In other words, if the church is not communicating in good ways and decent ways that, that these things are wrong, then why should anybody worry about them? Well, you know, we tend to dismiss these sort of things and we know that Jesus Christ is Lord and he has dominion over all these things. But, uh, you know, we have to educate, especially children, the things to watch, the things to look at. Many years ago, I went to Lindisfarne in the northeast of England, yeah. Holy Island, yeah. for a week's retreat. 
and I stayed in a Christian house there and I remember going into a Christian library and seeing the Harry Potter series along with the Bible along with works by uh, Francis of Assisi and when I asked the lady who rang the library why have you got this amongst Christian books oh she said it's just a bit of fun for the kids it keeps them occupied she didn't see any danger in it Mm. and mm. you know and these things you know if if we look at remember the film the exorcist that caused so much controversy well when you read the actual events that was that film was based upon it is low level playing with tarot cards and stuff mm. like that that things that seem very very harmless and i think the church need to edu educate children from a young age to stay away from these things because it opens doors into areas they shouldn't go mm. Mm. Uh, that's interesting. Isn't it? Well, at, at that point, you had none of this. In, in other words, for you, it was okay. You had no warnings about it. Well, one Catholic friend, and you weren't sure about the, the basis for that, so you could dismiss it. And so you started getting involved, and everything seemed to be okay. As you moved on, did you begin to have any frightening experiences but still carried on with it i mean what what happened as that developed yes i think sometimes that there was even a a slight fear at the back of your mind so to speak but you still went along um before anything really frightening happened there was still a little bit of apprehension um and then you would hear rumors of through the spiritualist churches you would hear that sometimes an obnoxious or mischievous spirit may manage to come through and you knew that that was a risk and a possibility um, but but you you just carried on anyway because most of the time you would be safe and you mm. most of the time your spirit guides would protect you so you would just just go along with it all anyway and did you I mean with, with that coming through did, did you actually realize that these spirits were in control of you rather than you in control of these spirits. I mean, because that, you know, that, that very fact that mis mischievous spirits, as, we, as they were called, could come through, surely that meant that you couldn't control things and, and these things were greater than you. D did that ever cause concern either for you or others around you? Well, it, it seems a bit strange, but I never really thought about it that way at the time, although I certainly see it that way now. Um, it was just quite strange how you could be so trusting of any spirit guides and, and the whole spirit realm when you don't you really know who could come through. So we were, I suppose, a bit naive to presume that everything will be safe. And I, I think we were, there were certain explanations given, like, well, if you have negative energies, you may attract a negative spirit, or if you're a very vulnerable person, you may suffer depression or mental illness by talking to spirits that was an explanation given but that would make me think well that shows you there's something dangerous in it then if you've got to make sure you're not negative or fearful or mm. you know it's mm. it's not as safe as what we would what originally think but because it was exciting because it was meeting a need you just carried on regardless e even with those doubts and question marks in in your mind and you and carried heart. on regardless because again i suppose you felt well my mother and i were members of one spiritualist church but also another two churches that we regularly went to so we had a, a lot of contacts of other spiritualists other mediums and i guess we felt if anything does go wrong we've got all those people who are very experienced and will be able to help us mm -hmm. therefore it's not really a risk and the benefits would seem to outweigh the disadvantages, like always having advice whenever you wanted, basically from your spirit guides or from mediums, very accurate advice and everything like that. So it, it did seem a, a, a huge plus, actually. Mm. So for you, most of the time, it was the spirit guides that were talking to you then and, and giving you messages, not necessarily dead people uh, 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 as such. Um, well, a mixture of both, really. Um, I was still developing in the psychic er area. My mother was clairaudient, clairvoyant, clairsentient. She could literally hear spirits any time. She didn't have to go to the spiritualist church to get a message from the medium. She <coughs> could hear spirits in the house 
whether they were spirit guides or so-called dead relatives, I was still developing in that area. Right. Yeah. And, and, and this didn't worry you at all? I mean, other than the, uh, you know, the, you say the doubts that you had, you, you, you could live in the house, you could be in the house, and these spirits could turn up and things like that could happen, and that not worried you at all? No, in fact, it was actually very comforting because, you know, I firmly believed that my dead grandmother was there and my dead sister was there, and it was something very comforting about that to think they were always with you and always on the lookout for you and so no it wasn't mm. it wasn't really frightening mm. it was a comfort really right. mm. michael when i mean you do with a lot of people yes. that have been involved in in various things and i mean when you start talking to people and they have that ex experience that laura has that well it's all right there's nothing wrong with it what wh where do you take them what wh what do you begin to do to try and help them well, what I would do is let them know the danger that they're in and though the spirit guides, or as we would call it in the church, familiar spirits, as experienced in 1 Samuel 28, verses 5 to 16, if I might quote that. Yeah, if anyone do. wants to read that, The Witch of Endor, yeah. the story of the tormented Saul who goes there to try and uh, conjure up the uh, body of Samuel, the prophet. So I would always say, uh, to people and like you say people are drawn into this because the information they get is very accurate mm -hmm. and if it's very accurate people think it's believable now if you have a look at the whole area of mediums and spiritualists when you've lost someone you love very very greatly and you may be suffering trauma you may have bereavement to hear that they're okay that they're safe on the other side they're happy they're with their friends and other members of their family is very comforting and you see the deception is that the devil wants you to be comforted so he can take you into the next level mm -hmm. of this sort mm -hmm. of thing he's not going to say for argument's sake your grand dad's being tormented oh your granddad's safe this is he's, he's gone to the path of the light and all this sort of stuff they talk about and uh, that's to draw you into the next level of it and the next level is opening up the occult and various occult skills to you to draw you in mm. uh, my mother who was a roman gypsy operated in these right skills as you would call it yourself right. i mean she could say what record was coming on the radio next Mm. when the records was playing she could mm. say oh the next record's the Beatles she loves you and it would come on mm -hmm. so there's something there whether it comes down the ancestral bloodline or whether it's there uh, but these skills are attractive to people mm. and you see we're not asking for repentance we're not asking for people to acknowledge their wrongs or their sins we're just asking them to move in those gifts if mm. they get involved mm. in it mm. I'm not talking about the stuff at fairgrounds and you know yeah I'm not talking Cross about my that. palm with no I'm talking about <laughs> real real deceptive uh, occult practices yeah, yeah. As, as you can see the uh, the text and the email uh, are up on the screen um, come through to us if you've got questions on this area as we develop this uh, first of all this whole area of uh, uh, Laura's involvement with spiritualism and deliverance from it and then as we talk further about Halloween do come on to us the text is 07781 472647 07781-472647 and the email is live at talkgod dot com so do come through they come up uh, on the screen in front of me and we'll bring your questions your comments in as we develop uh, and they become relevant to the conversation uh, that we're having so do uh, do come through and make contact with us and later on uh, we will um, have uh, the phone lines open I just hesitate because I just realized what I said do come through and make contact with us and I was talking about <laughs> you the living okay we weren't talking about uh, it's just the way my mind works it's all right guys um, L Laura you, in, in in spiritualism and you were getting involved with it and, and, and you were happy with it. Of course, your mother was involved with it, so that obviously helped uh, as well. Did you have any thinking concerning future life of what it would be, what it would be after death? Would everything be all right? Did, did you have any consideration uh, for eternal things while you, you, you were there in spiritualism? Really, within spiritualism, 
we, we really did take on board all of the New Age teaching and philosophies and, you know, Eastern teachings as well. So we, we firmly believed in, in reincarnation and karma. So we weren't worried about death at all. We believed we would go into other realms and progress through the realms. Um, we certainly didn't believe in heaven or hell mm. or punishment for sin or, or needing forgiveness or anything like that. You just worked through the cameras and even if you had been a mass murderer, you wouldn't go to hell. You would just go to a low-level plane and, and reincarnate and come back until you could work up the planes. And So we, we certainly didn't fear death and all. That's interesting, isn't it? That you, you can have such a belief like that that, that, that you just don't bother. Uh, you know, to, to, to look else, but I mean, I, I mean, I suppose it's difficult for me to understand. Well, I, I wasn't a spiritualist, and I didn't believe in reincarnation. I mean, I had a tremendous fear of death, um, and I think many people do. But just to be able to look at, it, I, I guess that you really had faith in 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 what you believed and what you were doing, didn't you? Well, yeah, we totally believed in it, and you know, we would say it wasn't a blind faith either because everything seemed to back up. There was plenty of evidence with the kind of information the so-called spirit guides would give us. The evidence was so spot on, you know, it, they couldn't have been guesswork involved or anything like that. So, you know, when the spirits did appear, they would look like your dead relatives. So you couldn't think there was any trickery involved. So therefore, if they taught you something on reincarnation, you would listen to that teaching mm. and you would accept mm. it. Mm. In, interesting. Did did anybody in this time talk with you about the gospel? And it, you know, b b before I, I know you really started being seriously. But did anybody come by? You know, apart from your Catholic friend that told you it was all wrong. Did anybody else talk to you about Christianity or anything? And, and you just thought, nah, that's not for me. I probably heard a little bit about it at school, but as I say, that would have been earlier. Um, I did, once we went on holiday to Ireland, this was when I was now married and, and we had a son, and we went to Ireland and we met an American lady, she was on holiday, she was a Christian, and um, we got chatting and I probably told her I was a spiritualist because I wasn't ashamed of it at all, right. and you know, she said, she spoke to me, I can't really remember all that she said, I probably thought she was really pretty ignorant and didn't listen to her, but the one thing she said was, Jesus loves you. And I was really quite taken aback at that, and it stuck in my head. And I, I remembered that for years. Mm. Jesus loves you, and I thought, how does she know that? And what relevance does that have? But I certainly never forgot it. Mm. Um, it stuck in my head. What what concept did you have of Jesus at that time? Uh, uh, you yeah. know, I mean, to, to us today as Christians, the phrase "Jesus loves you." has you know some real meaning but what concept did you have of Jesus in, in those days? We really most of us really felt that he did exist but we felt that he was perhaps just a really good psychic healer he maybe even was a medium and you know things that were written in the Bible could be explained in a sense he was just a great psychic talking to God he was just speaking to the universal spirit um, he could heal um, when prophecies and that kind of thing were given in the Bible, well, you know, he was just psychic. Um, we certainly didn't believe he was the Son of God. We didn't believe he died on the cross, shed his blood for our sins, that we need forgiveness and we need to come to him. We didn't believe any of that. We tended to think the Bible had been tampered with and even that um, it had been changed because people were afraid of spiritualism, but we felt that really spiritualism was the answer. Mm. But it's interesting that even when somebody said to you, Jesus loves you, even with your understanding of who Jesus was, that, that it did stick with you. Uh, mm. I mean, I, I find that very interesting, that, that's, that there is power in that name. Yeah. You know, even, even when you do not believe in that name, there is power in them because the, Jesus is powerful. Yeah, and around about that time as well, probably just after that, a year or two after that, we were contacted by cousins, distant cousins who lived in America. They were all Christians and they basically um, studied the family tree and managed to trace us mm -hmm. and contacted us mm -hmm. and began to write to us. So obviously they discovered we were into spiritualism. They began praying. 
They sent us a few books. They sent us letters explaining they were praying for us. I was quite interested in what my cousins had to say, but my mother didn't want to know. Right. She kept the letters from me, which later I was obviously a bit upset with her <laughs> over that. So they were obviously praying for us for a mm. couple of years before I did mm. convert to Christianity. That's great. That's great. How, how did you? I mean, let, let's move on to that part of the story, which is always a bit I like to get to. But, I mean, we have to set the scene. Yeah. And, and it is interesting because here you are with no thought of Christianity. Here you are with no real understanding of Jesus. A little bit fearful of a few things, but basically quite content with spiritualism, believing it was right, believing it was true, believing it was powerful, and no problems about death, etc. How? Did you come uh, to realising your need of Christ and your need of salvation? Basically, I suppose it, it began simply because there were some frightening experiences happening within spiritualism. More and more um, things would occur or we would hear rumours from other spiritualists and other mediums that they were having problems like poltergeist activities or their spirit guides would suddenly take over control whereas for years they had always only spoken to if you asked them to speak to you but now they were taking over and speaking whenever they felt like it and other mediums were upset by this it happened to us as well we were upset by this poltergeist activities in our house so we began to get disillusioned we still believed in it all but we began to get disillusioned when when these spiritual attacks began mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there was no answer to these spiritual attacks. No, I, I think if it had <coughs> been, um, if it had been just a mischievous or obnoxious spirit had managed to get through, they could have explained that away far more easily. But the confusing thing was because these were our spirit guides who had been with us for years, right from the start, who indeed, you know, the mediums and spiritualists who were our friends had brought through to us in the very first place in the spiritualist church that was confusing because why would our spirit guides do this to us now mm -hmm. and obviously the mediums couldn't explain well basically they were obviously deceived then mm -hmm. with those spirit guides and yet they hadn't discerned it in the start so that made us begin to wonder mm -hmm. have, have, Michael have you dealt with people that have had what they call poltergeist experiences and that and I mean how 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 do they perceive it and how do you perceive what what's going on there well i perceive naturally that the if if they come from the spiritualist church and they come from that sort of background that what they believed was a spirit guide is now uh, a familiar spirit that turned into a malevolent spirit because he has authority and as we've said before on previous show witchcraft and its power is all about authority once they gain authority, their authority has to be broken. And when they get authority, they use fear by throwing things about, by shouting, yelling, by causing a commotion in the house to stop themselves from being evicted. So what we have to do is teach the recipient of this evil that Jesus Christ has authority, use scripture. My favourite comes from Luke. The 70 returned with joy and said, Lord, even the Spirit submit to us in thy name. And Jesus goes on to say, I beheld Satan fall like lightning from heaven. I give you authority to trample on snakes, tread on scorpions, overcome the power of the enemy. Nothing by any means will harm you. You have to reassure people that though these can do this sort of stuff, and I've experienced it many, many times. Uh, I've had things thrown at me when I've gone in houses. No one's ever thrown any money at me, unfortunately. <laughs> but, you know, pots and pans and that sort of thing. And sometimes there's nasty smells and things like that that accompany this. That we, we, we take authority and we teach the person under these attacks that the authority comes from Jesus Christ mm -hmm. who has defeated Satan at Calvary mm -hmm. and not only defeated Satan but defeated his works and what they're experiencing are one of the works of the devil and if Jesus defeated Satan then he certainly defeated his works now we can move forward might not happen overnight because people have to start believing and they start having to move up in their faith so you have to give them scriptures that they can get encouragement from and they can get hope from mm -hmm. and that's the best way forward you know you can run around the house shouting and screaming at these things 
But, you know, as we know what the Bible says, as soon as you're gone, they come back, yeah. unless yeah. the person has accepted the mm -hmm. Lord. Not necessarily in one go, but they're beginning to accept the mm -hmm. Lord, mm -hmm. you know. I mean, Laura, I mean, that sort of almost describes your situation, doesn't it? Because you, you had no answer to these things that were going on. You knew it really wasn't right. You knew it wasn't what it should be. Um, and, and in one sense, that's the negative. Um, the positive is finding the answer to it. H how did you come to Christ and find an answer to all of that? Basically, things continued that way, where um, my mother was now being controlled by her spirit guides, she would no longer decide when to go into trance. They just took over whenever they wanted. It got to the point where they were speaking through her all the time, communicating with her all the time. She couldn't sleep. She was very distracted. Um, some friends of ours, spiritualists and mediums, did try to help her. Um, but, it, you know, it just didn't help. And I would stress at this point that we loved the spiritualists, we loved the mediums, they weren't nasty people, they weren't evil, anything like that, and I'm definitely not saying that. They were very caring people, very loving people, but they were just at a loss as well as how to help us. So eventually we stopped going to the spiritualist church, and um, things got so bad with the poltergeist activities, my mother's health naturally suffered as well. You know, she had depression, anxiety, I was being attacked by spirits too, um, things thrown at me and that kind of thing, but my mother was certainly suffering more from that side of it. It went on like that for a long, long time, um, and as I say, I met Paul and we, we moved house, we got married, had a child. We still had things going on in my house, spiritual attacks, even my son did as a toddler too, he suffered from it too but my mother was experiencing it worse. What eventually happened was her doctor was involved. Now naturally they didn't believe in, in, in spirits and speaking to spirits, so they presumed she was schizophrenic. Mm. And um, they, for her own safety and the safety of others, um, because, you know, we would be shopping, say, and my mother would suddenly be picked up and just thrown across the road. So that that was obviously dangerous. Um, another time she was in the house, she was forced into a trance while she was cooking and um, didn't realise that the chip pan had caught fire, the whole kitchen was up in flames while she was still in a trance. So naturally the doctor would say for her own safety she had to be incarcerated in a psychiatric ward, which obviously was extremely traumatic. And it was after she'd been in there a few months that I met a Christian mm -hmm. lady um, at that point I was in second year at university and I met her in a psychology tutorial and um, we became friends quickly and she would tell me about her Christian church and of course I thought that they were all just psychic really and that she spoke about Jesus and she spoke about people being healed and I thought well people are healed in the spiritualist church too, you're just psychic like me, that's, that's what I thought at first but she knew the situation with my mother and um, she said she would pray for us both. And, and then she said in the Christian church that she attended, there were some people who used to dabble in the occult or spiritualism. And similarly, they had poltergeist activities, but it was when they became a Christian that the activities were finally dealt with, that Christ, once he came into their lives and once they got to know Christ, like Michael was saying, their houses were finally cleansed. So that really rang a bell with me and that really attracted me to mm -hmm. going along to her church. Mm -hmm. So you're beginning now. Uh, you, you're still not out, but you're beginning to hear that maybe there's an answer to the bad experiences you're having. Uh, you went along to the church. What was your reaction? Was it different? Was it the same? What went on? She had been asking me for a few months and I kept putting her off because I wasn't entirely convinced or entirely interested but when she said that a, a, a preacher was coming, a visiting preacher who had the gift of prophecy, then I really paid attention because having been a spiritualist um, we were so used to prophetic things and, and that really interested me so that's what attracted me along so I did go, still thinking the guy was probably just a psychic you know, 
But um, so we preached preached the gospel that night, and I don't know that I totally believed in it that night. But when he prophesied, and obviously people people were ministered to through the Holy Spirit, and people were healed and and everything like that. Um, and there was just something in me that thought, well, what if this is true and Jesus really is the Son of God? What if mm -hmm. I hadn't really thought about it before? What if this is true? I can't walk away from this and ignore it like it didn't happen. I have to consider this. Um, as an intelligent person, you have to consider it. Um, and he did pray, and he actually prayed for people to become a Christian that night, which I didn't do. But funnily enough, he also prayed, if there's anyone here who has known God but has backslidden away from God and wants to come back to God tonight, I'll pray with you. Now, funnily enough, in my confused state, I thought, because I hadn't been to the spiritualist church for months, I was backslidden away from God, and yes, I would quite like prayer to come back to God. Right. So, um, but he prayed with me that night, and I, and I feel that his prayers certainly would have helped. Mm -hmm. um, so, but yeah, it, it was a really good experience. But when I went home that night, it wasn't so good. Just the spirits were really angry that I had been to the the, ch the Christian church, obviously, right. Right. and that was quite a. A frightening mm -hmm. night, mm -hmm. and I, again, in a sense, that proved to me well, if they don't like Jesus, then they can't really be my relatives after all, or they can't mm -hmm. really be these good spirit guys that they're claiming to be, or they wouldn't be acting so That's right. horribly. That's right. <laughs> so, you're in a war now, um, you, you, you've started, as it were, going over to the other side, and the spirits ain't very happy with you. Um, how, how did you get through that? How, what happened? That night I was really pretty frightened. I, um, I was used to being attacked by spirits before. That's never a good thing at all. It's extremely terrifying. But that night I was more frightened because I thought, hold on a minute, why are they so frightened? What is going on? Um, my husband was working night shift in the hospital that night and our son was staying at my husband's parents. So I was in the house on my own, which made it worse. So I literally kept all the lights on in the house and... Funnily enough, that day before I went to the Christian church, I had been going through clothes and books and things to, to clear out to take to a charity shop. And a book, well, a, bi a Bible that I probably was given at school was amongst all that stuff that I was ready to, to take to a charity shop. But it was sitting right on the top of the pile of all the clothes. And it caught my eye and I thought, well, I, you know, I've got to look at this. And, mm -hmm. Um and I prayed, I was confused, and, you know, I prayed, is Jesus the Son of God? Is he just a psychic? Is he the Son of God? Should I leave spiritualism? Should I become a Christian? You know, and I was praying, if, if God is real, please answer me. Um, and I flicked the Bible open, and it literally fell on a page that was about, basically it summed up, get out of spiritualism, um, which I was really pretty shocked and frightened and horrified to realise that and over the next few days a few more scriptures came to mind that explained to me what mm -hmm. spiritualism was all about mm -hmm. one being Deuteronomy 18 right. that that one really um, if we have time I could read that out that one, please read it that one yeah. really yes, do read it. clarified to me it's Deuteronomy chapter 18 verse 9, nine let no one be found among you who sacrifices his son or daughter in the fire, and as we know that happens in which some forms of witchcraft, who practices divination or sorcery, interprets omens, engages in witchcraft or casts spells, or who is a medium or a spiritist or consults the dead. And uh, it goes on to say that, that that is an abomination to God. Mm -hmm. And then really, of course, the question arises, well, who are these spirits really? What is their true identity? They're claiming to be my dead relatives. They're claiming to be good spirit guys. But who are they really? What does the Bible say? Mm. Th th their real identity? And the scripture that explained that was 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 14 and 15. Well, they're false prophets, and no wonder, for Satan himself masquerades as an angel of light. It's not surprising then if his servants masquerade as servants of righteousness. You know, and it, and it really just, there's other verses obviously like that throughout the Bible that show 
um, as Michael was saying, the Bible calls them familiar spirits. And in the Hebrew, familiar spirits actually means demons. Mm -hmm. So we're not talking about nice spirits at all. They're imposters. Because they're psychic, they know everything about us. They know everything about generations going back for years. So they can impersonate our family and, and give us all the information. Mm -hmm. It's it's interesting. <clears throat> you've made, I don't know if you're aware of it, but in, in what you've said there, you've made a clear distinction between the people and the power behind the people. As you said, the majority of those that you knew as spiritualists were very nice people. But you've then gone on to show that the, the problems come because of opening up to these powers which are not for our good, um, and, 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 and have an effect, and because they're supernatural, can, ha can have a clear effect on our lives. And you've made that distinction. Do you still see that, like that these days, that uh, as you, you know, th meet people or spiritualists or, or witches, you, you, you still begin to see that the people themselves, yeah, they're very genuine, they're very nice people, but they've opened up to something which, which could be a problem to them. I do definitely and I find it personally heartbreaking because they were people that I loved and mm. um, and they weren't wicked people and you know sometimes Christians who don't understand completely what spiritualism about they'll just assume spiritualists are all wicked evil people and that that's hurtful because they're not that way at all they're not Satanists you know they're not doing evil stuff as I said, they tend to be the most nicest person you ever met and because of their compassion, I think that's why they get drawn into spiritualism because mm -hmm. they want to comfort people. So, um, and I think Christians should realise that and be nice to them, be kind to them. Don't treat them judgmentally or assume they're wicked because they're not. As you say, it's the spirits behind it all are wicked, not the mm -hmm. people. Mm -hmm. Interesting. You know, uh, Michael, there, there may well be some people out there watching us right now <clears throat> and even though we're saying they're nice people uh, we're obviously saying we believe that what they do is not the best for them what we do is uh, is is not what God wants them to I mean to, to do um, where do we how do we begin with such people to even begin to put doubts in their mind begin to to show them that yeah we'll be very we're being very genuine in what we say and and we want dialogue with them uh, but we do believe that changes need to be made where, where do we begin with that i had an instance recently i met a lady and uh, she actually went to a jumble sale and she went to a jumble sale in a hall and she noticed there was another room off of this main hall and as she walked past it, a man came out from the hall and said, I need to speak to you. He said, I see a dark man standing beside you. Do you know this dark man? And she gave the name of this man. Now, it turned out this lady had lost her son some years earlier. He'd had a brain hemorrhage and literally was walking down the road and dropped down dead. Now, what terrified her is this lady's husband uh, was a West Indian man, so the son was of mixed race and he was a very dark mixed race boy and he gave her the name and he gave her anything else. She did the right thing. She said she was absolutely petrified and left on the spot and ran away. And the first thing I would like to say is I believe Laura's testimony is fantastic. It's one of the greatest things I've ever heard. She's so clear and precise over this and it must touch people out there who have got similar problems but the first thing to do is don't hang about walk away mm -hmm. go away look at the bible consult a christian friend and ask is this experience right is god you see some people think god uses these people i had someone tell me recently that jesus was a rakeist Right. because he laid on hands yeah. and when people come from that sort of teaching they believe in that sort of thing they believe that Jesus had ultimate occult powers and as you know there's certain practices that are taught that, that Jesus and Lucifer were of equal level mm -hmm in worldly terms so people have to walk away from it don't just fall for it don't just be sucked into it uh, you know if when we go to buy something in a shop sometimes we think about it go away before we come back and purchase it anyone who's been uh, 
someone who says they're a medium or a spiritualist or a soothsayer or a fortune teller don't accept what they say walk away and go and consult others especially consult Christians and I don't mean these sort of churches that yell and shout at you I'm talking about people who know the Bible know the word of God uh, you know Ephesians 5 verses 11 and 12 tell us about this sort of wickedness and deceit and we need to go there and and seek other mm -hmm. people with experience in these things mm -hmm. uh, and, and really most churches should be able to lead you on the straight and narrow even if they don't have deliverance ministries within them they should be able to give you good information regarding Deuteronomy 18 verses 9 and 12 uh, and other scriptures in the Bible uh, it is clear God has been speaking about this since the early days mm. this is not a new phenomenon you know when we go back as far as Deuteronomy or the Pentateuch the first five books of the Bible we know God speaks often about it and you've both mentioned the importance of God's word you mentioned how God spoke to you and you just opened the Bible and God was very graciously uh, I never recommend people to read the Bible like that but no. you know how gracious God is that that you saw that and you've just mentioned a whole number of scriptures there I mean is it do you see the scripture as the living word of God that is able to deal with this spiritual power because the word of God is living and active it is not just a, a dead book and something to put on the shelf well I look at it like this in the Old Testament God spoke through the prophets in the new covenant Jesus Christ himself spoke on the earth it's not we can't argue with the word of God if God says don't then don't don't mm. do these things mm. if we don't know the word we have a problem because we can easily be lured into these things I was never lured mm. into the occult I was terrified by the occult as I've said before and I had a presence of demons and evil spirits around me all the time as a child and God himself impacted into my life I never had any Christian teaching because as we say my father and mother were not Christians both uh, were actually against Christianity in many ways my mother used to speak constantly about uh, deja vu about reincarnation and about other teachings and she's openly spoke to it and you know when children are small and they hear these things it's like if they have parents that are racist and these things are spoken constantly they absorb them so God's word is is I think the only word the final word Jesus is the Alpha the Omega the beginning and the end there's nothing in between mm -hmm. everything is deception and everything lures us away from the truth mm -hmm. and that's the message we need to get across today that the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end is Jesus Christ. Anything else is deception. Mm. Mm. Laura, you, you opened your Bible, you, you found those verses there. Um, how, how has the Word of God become, what has the Word of God become to you today? Do, does God continue to speak to you through it? Does he continue uh, to, to develop your life uh, through what he says and what he inputs into your life? Absolutely, I, I totally, I love the Bible, I can't say how much I love it, um, definitely, and then the more, more you get to know Christ, the more the Bible comes alive to mm -hmm. you all the time, the, the closer you get to him, the more you fall in love with him, the more the Bible means more important to you and, and gives you clear direction uh, on a regular basis. Um, I would also like to say, if I could backtrack mm, a little bit, do. just to what Michael was saying there about the Bible, um, I think for some spiritualists, certainly for myself, it wasn't just a case of because I read the scriptures that explain spiritualism, that wasn't quite enough for me because, as I say, we tended to think the Bible had been adulterated, so we didn't really believe it. Um, but I think the thing that helped me the most was hearing testimonies from other mediums mm, and know. other spiritualists or witches, psychics, who had been through the same experiences as us the same being attacked by spirits um, and um, I met when I, when I actually just become a Christian it was George Aitken a Glasgow medium he <coughs> became a Christian he shared his testimony and it really clarified everything to me mm. that mm. you know that, that what he was saying and Sadie Bryce another Glasgow medium and then of course I read some books some quite well-known books um, like I Talked With Spirits by Victor Ernest 
The Challenging Counterfeit by Raphael Gasson and Out from Darkness by Ben Alexander. Now they were all very accomplished, very successful mediums and yet they all went through the same experiences, they yeah. all saw it in the spiritualist churches. Some of them were leaders of spiritualist churches, they saw this kind of stuff happening in those spiritualist churches and they became Christians through it all. So when I heard it wasn't just me, it wasn't just <coughs> that my, my mum and I were unlucky, but this was quite a common occurrence for spiritualists that really clarified to me that yeah. that the Bible was true. Yeah. H how easy was it to walk away from spiritualism? I, I mean, obviously there would come a point where you fully committed your life to Christ, but how easy was it then to follow him and walk away from spiritualism? The first few days, it was a rather strange experience because there was almost like a sense of grief in suddenly realising these spirits. Well, my grandmother, who used to visit me from the spirit world, started to attack me. Um, the so-called uh, sister started to try and strangle me. So I realised they weren't my dead family, they were evil spirits. But there was a grief that came because suddenly now you had to grieve over your dead family afresh mm. if you like and realize they're not going to visit me anymore because we know the bible says when you die you either go to heaven or hell you can't come back and and visit your family on earth so there was a sort of a grief process there um and and probably a bit of shock and fear and shame and a mix of emotions but obviously just such a sense of relief to realize that jesus is who he says he is Amen. he's now in my life and you know, a great deal of darkness and other things left me when I did did um, turn to him and commit to him. And and so was it a sort of a once and for all deliverance, or did it take some time? Uh, it certainly took some time. I think it, it tends to do so. Um, it, it was easy to throw out occult paraphernalia, um, spiritualist magazines, books, uh, lots of tapes we had of private sittings um, where spirits communicated you know I, I threw them out I burned them that was easy to, to get rid of all of that but the, the process of deliverance um, did take quite a bit of time mm -hmm. um, and as Michael says it's not as easy as just going in and cleansing a house and that's it the person themselves has to get close to Christ and you know get to know him get to trust him and yeah you can get some deliverance straight away but yeah it's a process mm -hmm. as well do you find we need to learn this, um, Michael? I mean, it seems to me that there are some areas of the deliverance ministry where, you know, people just want to pronounce it over somebody and that's it, finish, yes. you're dead, you, you're free. And, you know, and if you're yes. not free, it's your fault and the rest of it. So do, do you think we need to teach the church that is ongoing and, and we need to walk with these people in a very real way? We need to understand how Satan works and how demons and evil spirits work. The legalism they apply to someone who may make covenants with them, who may make sacrifice to them, that it's not enough for them just to go to church and uh, proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord. These things have to be untangled and sometimes they take time to untangle. I'm working with a lady at the moment who has been through all this sort of thing, has been through the occult in many, many different levels. And I can see in her God moving, and each day she looks a little bit better. It's a bit like someone in intensive care, and each time you go to visit them, they go, oh, you're looking well today. And sometimes the lady loses a bit of patience. She said, why isn't it done? Why isn't it done? And I said, well, when God does it, he does it and makes it right. So we don't have to go back to where we were before. We're just going to move forward. And the church do need to teach this. When I first came into the deliverance ministry, you watch other people and you get the impression that someone's caught up on stage, shouted at for five minutes, and then they go home and everything in the it's garden's rosy. Yeah. You know, it's, it's not as easy as that with the devil. We know he's fallen and we know that Jesus Christ has defeated him. But Laura had to know that Jesus Christ had defeated him and everyone out there watching who's got these problems needs to know that. Because mm. the devil will tell you that it's not. He will mm. speak to you all the time and he'll say, I'm never going, I'm never leaving, I'm here 
for the duration right so you know we have to teach deliverance that's why we try and what we try and do in our ministry is teach people the aspects of deliverance mm -hmm. the authorities mm -hmm. and how they can apply to deliverance amen. in their own churches amen we, we, we got a few uh, texts and emails which I want to go through and then I want to talk a little bit about Halloween mm. Uh, as well, great testimony, Laura. Thank you. Wonderful. Uh, I mean, it's, Wonderful. It's, it's just great to uh, you know to, to hear, and, and of course, I've got to know you over the months as well, and 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 and, and just to see that that tremendous um, setting free. I mean, obviously, I never knew you as a spiritualist, but <coughs> as as Michael says, very graphic. You know, you, you get the picture, uh, but but that Christ has set you free, and, and yeah, I know there's still ongoing needs in your life, but but it's still that basis there isn't it that, that yeah Christ has done it and he is doing it and he's still going to go and do it absolutely yeah yeah, yeah. yeah it's great okay let's uh, let's go through a few texts and, 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 and emails and uh, um, um, this is from Patrick um, I was involved in the occult until I became a Christian at 20 can you recommend any ways I can meet with other Christians who want to reach out to psychics that's a good question, and there's your answer, Patrick. No. <laughs> um, I, I mean, what I would say is uh, do make contact um, on, on the website and, and the office there uh, will be the details of Reach Out Trust that, that I work with and, and, and Michael's ministry as well, um, and, 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 and indeed links to um, uh, Laura's testimony. Um, yeah, make some contact, ask, because there are others out there. Um, very interesting, the sort of thing is to go on to forums like we have a forum at reach out trust ask the question are there others i would want to say patrick first of all make sure it's what god wants you to do mm. um don't just think oh i need to do that yeah maybe you do but just ask that question it is important isn't it because yes. we, we we can feel sometimes we've got to do this but what does god want me to do we shouldn't go in the enemy's camp unless we're prepared for victory and we need to be prepared up front there are a lot of people out there needing to be delivered but uh, you know uh, jesus is the deliverer not us and sometimes we can get carried away and be a bit too enthusiastic we need to always stop and look what we're doing mm. Mm. I think as well, could I add to that, that um, oftentimes maybe that is an area that God is calling you to, but maybe not just yet. It oh, yeah. could take a few years or quite a few years before yeah. you are ready. To yeah, because well, we don't know how, how no. old he is now, so we don't know how long ago it yeah. was. But yeah, I, I would agree. I, I think I think there is a point, and both of you have, have mentioned that same thing about being ready and being prepared. Yes. And, it, and sometimes it does take time before God says now you're ready because yeah. I've done something within you I, I mean I always go back to David before Saul and you know, yeah. there ain't no way he was he was prepared yeah. uh, very interestingly he was prepared because of the bear and the lion you know killing them and therefore he had the sling and he could he yeah. could do all of that no no problem but but Saul wanted him to go and do it a different way with the arm but he wouldn't do it no. you know he said no i'll do it but i'll do it the way god's prepared yes, yes, me to and, yes. and so i think we do have to be careful there okay um hi dag and guess um i hope you're all in the pink no nope. yeah. um great show today uh, just want to say uh that through the occult and deem that and demons are dangerous uh, and though the occult demons then we should dab with them we should also not fear them I think we've said that yes, already. Yes. Many Christians talk about demons like they would be feared and they have some great power over us. We have a great, powerful God who's conquered Satan and all his demons through Jesus' death and resurrection. While we should know the dangers of the occult, we shouldn't constantly be looking around corners for demons to pop up. Hope you don't think I'm being trivial. Not at all, Nadia. Can, can I just, say something? Yeah, I, let me finish. Yeah, yeah, yeah let me finish, no, then sorry. you can say something. Sorry. <laughs> Just trying to be balanced. All right. Anyway, take care. God bless. Yeah. Yeah. Please do. do Not so. just the occult that attracts demons. You know, people in sin, certain types of sin, attract demons as well. So you don't have to find a demon by going to a, a coven or certain temples. Certain things in our life, and we need to read the Book of Revelation. Mm. You know, and it tells you that uh, the things that do attract demons. So, you know, never just put it down to the occult. Right. We have to look at every area in our life and we have to make provision. And, and we cannot, you, you know, and, and I think Nadia no, no, is, is saying that, we, we, we cannot just be flippant about demons, but no. we mustn't fear them. In other words, we must realise they have power if we let them have yes. power. But we need to see what Christ has mm. done. 
um, and therefore we're not flippant about them but 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 we at the same time we don't fear we know our deliverance in in Christ I I remember many years ago I was called to a house in Tottenham uh, to see a young lady and she'd had various various problems and when I went in the house she was levitating off the floor mm. that was the power and I said you've held a seance in the house haven't you and she said yes I have my next door neighbor wanted to contact her husband and I said did you hold it here and she said yes well she was fearful believing that uh, she could never get rid of these things and she had a small child that was absolutely terrified and the first thing I did was reassure them of Christ's power Christ's authority before we did anything else mm. you know before anything actually took place and we should always be aware what they're able to do in the physical you see one of the things that gives people the, the thought that these things are so powerful is because they can affect our physical being mm -hmm. they can make us look a strange way speak in strange tongues that are foreign to us you know a physical manifestation we must, we must say at the moment also there is a reel of that but there, yes, there, there yeah, yeah. Before, before somebody brings, oh he's saying no, speaking no, no, in no. tongues of the devil yeah no, yeah, I, no, no I know you know that you know what I mean yeah. Yeah. yes so, so you know we should always be aware that, that Christ will always conquer these things if we're willing to accept mm. Jesus and mm. accept his power not our own power mm. amen so important isn't it yes and I like um, the, the email there because I agree with what he said we, we definitely do need to be in balance um, uh, and be aware of, of Christ's victory and not dwell on these things at yeah. all that's not healthy not get out of balance not look for demons under every stone that's really stupid um, but I think we just do need to sometimes be aware of it and um, like my own testimony, I'm not in the habit of sharing it. I went many years without sharing, sharing it, yeah. um, pre partly because of not wanting to be as if always talking about demons. Yeah, right. But on the other hand, it's, uh, these testimonies do need to be shared to, to warn folks, right. and it is the balance and, and it sharing is because without you, you, dwelling. Yeah, because you do talk about the demons, but of course you talk about the Christ that overcame mm -hmm. the demons. And, that's and that, right, that, that's to, that, to glorify so him. Yeah. To glorify him and lift yeah. up his name and exalt yeah. him. and. Yeah, more absolutely. so than, than talking about the other side. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Um, uh, Doug, please advise. My friend is schizophrenic. Uh, he's a Christian, but used to smoke drugs and attributes mental illness to this. He's had he's had much prayer, but everyone says there is something dark there. I want I once saw books on occult in his home, although he says he's no longer there. What would you advise? Well, if he's, if he's uh, been taking drugs, dr drugs naturally are mind-altering. And one of the things about drugs is that they take us to parts in our mind that medi the medical profession don't know an awful lot about. I believe that's an open door. The first thing that I always find with people who are smoking marijuana very heavily is they become paranoid and you know paranoia does lead to schizophrenia uh, paranoia and schizophrenia are certain acute types of fear that come on and as we know God didn't give us a spirit of fear but of power love and sound mind so when these fears and paranoias come upon us they must be the works of darkness but that's not quite as simple as that because of course constant drug abuse can damage mm you know, physically damage us that we can't think correctly anyway. Yeah. So we, we, we certainly he, he needs to want help, doesn't yes. he? And, and I suspect in a situation like that, it would be looking to both get spiritual help, but also um, yes. medical help as yes, well, both together at, at, at that point in time. Help with his addiction. Yeah. Um, if moving into a new home, how can we cleanse and bless it? Oh, well, you know, we've, we've all got the Bible in front of us if we're Christians. When we move in a house, we claim that house. We claim it in the name of Jesus Christ. And whatever went on before, because when we move into houses, we don't know what's gone on before. There might have been nothing gone on before. They might have been inhabited by people who were very happy and loving there. But I always think that we should go in there and just claim that house for Jesus Christ. You know, cover that house with the precious blood of the Lamb and, you know, say good things about that house and say good things of what we're going to do in the future in this house mm -hmm. this is your house lord we invite you here may you make your presence here 
Amen. And that's what we do. Because he's the only one that can do it, can't he? Because yes. I- if there is anything in the atmosphere in the house, he's the only one that can do it. We can't do no, it. No, we can't. So you, you, you've got to invite him in. Yes. I mean, but and it's the same, isn't it, with, with us. Yes. As, as you, just as we're talking about that house, of cleansing that house and inviting that's exactly what's got to happen to us as well. Yes, yes, isn't yes, it? I mean, exactly. But that's what happened. We, I've got a, let me just start, we've got, got a, um, a text here from Susan uh, how did the lady uh, come to the Lord after she read Deuteronomy 18.9? Uh, she obviously doesn't feel you uh, said it and, and that clearly enough. So uh, you read, you, you saw Deuteronomy 18.9. What happened so that you came right the way through to the Lord? Basically the next few days um, I was having quite a few conversations with my friend Susan who was a Christian. She invited me back to that church and I did go for a few Sundays, I think it was a few weeks, a couple of weeks before I actually fully committed to Christ and in that time there, there was obviously a lot of thoughts going on and I had to, well I spoke to my mother, I was concerned about her because she was still in the psychiatric hospital. She was really quite upset and angry with me at first, she felt I was a traitor to our spiritualist beliefs. Mm. Um, so it was a couple of weeks and um, I don't know, it was just one day I just suddenly realised that Christ was who he said he was and well also because of these other testimonies that I'd heard from ex-occultists that Christ was the only one who could help them. Mm. That, I think, kind of cinched it for me as well. Right. Um, so, so I did ask Christ into my heart um, in the church and really began to, to go yeah. More, yeah. more often. Yeah. Um, but my mother, um, she it took a little while but she would come to the church she was allowed out at the weekend from the psychiatric ward so I would take her to the church she did eventually ask Christ into her heart as well however the problem there was that she still had to go back to the psychiatric ward her house was still haunted um, so when she, she did get a lot better through, through prayer from the Christians in the church and eventually the psychiatrist said she was free to go home but at that particular time in that church that we were in then, Christian church, they didn't have the deliverance ministry yet. They didn't really believe in the deliverance ministry yet. They, they do do it now, but at that point they didn't. So unfortunately my mother was, was really badly demon-possessed, and when she went home the poltergeist activity was still there. She didn't really know Christ strong enough yet. She was still doped up on tranquilizers, mm-hmm. so she couldn't even read the Bible much. And basically things got so bad that, that she took her life, mm. she committed mm. suicide. Mm. But, you know, thankfully I was then a Christian for a few months and, and Christ was able to see me through that whole situation. That was tough, wasn't it? It, it was very traumatic, yeah, yeah. very, very. And, and very interesting that it, he took you through it ra- rather than it sort of knocking your faith, that, that he took you through it. That's, that, that, that's great. Yeah, it is, yep. Yeah. Okay, oh dear, we're, we're going to uh, run out of uh, uh, time at the moment. Um, my grandson said in his bedroom he sees bad people that upset him. What can I do to help him? He's only six years old. He lives in an army quarter. You need to pray for your grandson. You need to spend some time with him when he goes to bed of a night. And even after he's asleep, to continue praying for him as he goes into the various levels of sleep. Be there with him, uh, comfort him. Can I just tell you about my own granddaughter? Please do. Many, many years ago, my, my granddaughter had a very difficult start to life, very difficult. Her father walked out on her when she was four weeks old. And my daughter had to bring her up on her own, and it was very traumatic. She ended up homeless and having to move in with me. When they did finally find a place, she said to me, she was six, she said, Grandad, I went to sleep last night, and Hades came. And I said, pardon? I said, where did you get that name from? And she said, that's who he said he was, Hades. And I said, what did he look like? She said, very dark, and he had a cloak, and he covered me. And I said, and how did you feel? She said, well, I was very frightened, Grandad, and I didn't know what to do. And I Mm. said, well, what happened? She said, you know who came? And I said, oh, she said, Hercules came. So I said, who was Hercules? She said, this man turned up in armour with a flashing sword, and she said, and Hades ran away from him. Mm. 
And I said, what happened then? She said, this man just stroked me on my head and I went to sleep. Now she told me this, and she was only six years of age. So I do believe with children in particular, because children think about things, they imagine things. Uh, I think we have to be very, very careful, especially at the night time, we pray for them. As I say, even after they've gone to sleep, spend 20 minutes with them continuing to pray so they receive peace. Peace is the greatest thing, it overcomes all things. Mm. Amen. Amen. Could I maybe add to that? Please. Something similar happened with our child. Um, and I, I just sort of a, I asked my pastor's advice and she spoke with him, prayed with him, and she also said, you know, just explain Jesus, explain the blood of Jesus and so that he can do that himself mm. in that situation. And he did. The yeah. next time an evil <laughs> spirit came in his room, he spoke about Jesus and the blood of Jesus and the spirit left mm. and didn't come back. Mm. So it's good to perhaps if you can maybe teach them a little bit. It is, and it's communicating them at the level where they are so that they understand, mm. isn't it? You don't have to tell all the frightening stories no, and no. you don't no. have to you know, make it out to, in its worst. Good, but you can just share what Jesus has done and who he is and he loves them and, 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 and he can deliver them from, yep. from these things. Hmm. Uh, next question we've already answered what happened to Laura's mum please tell us well we've, uh, we've dealt with that one um, um, this person says I've made covenants in the Mormon temple is that the occult I don't want to offend anyone by saying this <laughs> really I don't but no. I think yes it, it is a form of occult mm. because I do understand that Mormons have various practices that are non-biblical like baptizing the dead and things like that. I think that when we go off the uh, the beaten track, as you like, and we go away from the true word of God, uh, that the end of the Bible says that we mustn't add anything or subtract anything from the word of God. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about the validity of the Book of Mormon and the visitations by the angel Moroni and various things that the uh, Church of the Latter-day Saints is based on, I think we have to check these things because uh, I believe that covenants made with any church is wrong. Mm. Uh, we make covenants with God. We mm. don't make covenants with the church. We may uh, have an obedience to that church because we're a member of it, but we certainly shouldn't swear mm. covenants mm. in any church. And, and, and that's not saying anything, in, in that sense, against the Mormons. No, because not at all. As you say, it, it, it's against the... Uh, you know, many Mormons are, I've, I've known, are, are very nice people and yes. very genuine people. Yes. But what we are saying is, yes, some of the things that you say yes. in that Mormon temple do put you under a bondage, which is not under bondage to God. No. It's, it's under bondage to something else. Yes. And, and therefore, I, I, again, I think sometimes, you know, we use the term occult and just think it, you know, just means Satan coming, you know, blazing and that. But it's not necessary because anything that in the end puts us under a bondage which is not freedom in Christ is going to cause problems in in that realm of, of, of the satanic realm as a whole, isn't it? I think the spirit that operates in those areas is the spirit of error. Mm -hmm. Because we've listened to error, we've believed error mm -hmm. and we've applied error into our belief systems. Mm -hmm. Mm. Uh, I, I don't think we're going to get too far with the Halloween today, and I'm not oh, too worried about that. We, okay. we, if you really want to know about the Halloween, and you think, oh, when they're going to go on to it, and we don't get on to it, uh, there's a documentary um, being uh, shown this weekend, uh, which has been made, Halloween Trick or Treat. And so that will be absolutely excellent for, for, for you to watch, and that will give you all the information. We will try and get on to it, and if you've got questions, do, uh, do come on. Uh, I'll open the phone lines in just a minute and you may want to answer uh, ask those uh, as well um, but th this is uh, I went in search of my dead mum to mediums for three years but it was God himself that spoke to me in one of their places that I was in he said get out you shouldn't be here when I returned home he told me Deuteronomy 18 I was attacked at night by his demons with night terrors but not no more um, bless you, Jeanette. She sounds to have a very similar experience uh, to, to, to you there. Mm -hmm. uh, it's amazing how God can take um, can take control. I, I don't, it didn't come out too well, but you know, in a situation like that where somebody is is not thinking and and is looking in all the wrong places, God can still graciously meet them because He sees the, the genuineness of their heart. 
Absolutely. Well, as you said before, Doug, you know, God is supernatural with a capital S. Yeah. The psychic realm is supernatural with a small S. You were listening. God, <laughs> God, God, is, God is greater than all of these things, and yeah. He certainly can break through. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Um, uh, great program. A, f a friend where I work and his wife have recently taken an interest in spiritualism. This is Ray from Paynton. Uh, and have started going to the local spiritualist church. I've told him I am a Christian, but I haven't tackled him on spiritualism yet. How would you advise me to go about it? Laura, here he is, working with this person, going to the spiritualist church. How would you advise? What What basic ideas would you put forward for him? I think he could certainly give that verse in Deuteronomy chapter 18 verse 9 um, but, but also as I said before you know, people interested in these things won't necessarily listen to the Bible if you quote the Bible but mention other testimonies from people like myself, these other mediums who have mentioned and spiritualists psychics, wiccans, witches, anyone really who has had spirit guides mm -hmm. and discovered they weren't who they claimed to be and, and came out and found Christ. Mm -hmm. I think testimonies mm -hmm. of other mediums who have been right. into it. Yeah, and, and you, you'll be able to find, uh, Ray, if you want to go that way, um, if you either go onto the Revelation TV website and found, find the Simply the Truth page, um, or make contact with the office, we'll be able to give you the links uh, of where you can find Laura's testimonies and other testimonies of people uh, that have been involved and come out and, yeah, maybe say, look, this is something that these people have found. Should you consider this as well and and in other words you're not saying to them you're wrong but what you are saying is others have been there and have found uh, it, it it to be different did you have any other advice well one thing i would say to the gentleman think of trust uh, a lot of people go to spiritualist churches to contact dead relatives now surely if we trust the lord and we would know that the lord will uh, our dead relatives will be with the Lord or they will not be with the Lord that's what the word says even people I've met who are not Christians who have no Christian uh, belief they believe that God is God even though they don't worship him or practice as a Christian so the thing about spiritualism is we can only become a spiritualist if we have doubt because doubt leads us to seek and once we seek that's when the door opens so it's really about trusting and believing that God hears who he is mm. and he will do what he does if I can say one thing about your mum my mother on the night she died she uh, had terrors five minutes before she died extreme terrors and I watched it as a young man I was only 19 and I really didn't know and I got the impression that we wasn't alone in the room mm -hmm. I got that impression though at the time I wasn't a Christian and I didn't know I remember I went as cold as ice and she had a very very traumatic passing mm. and mm -hmm. that's because I believe of the things she had been involved in right. at many times in her life right and hadn't come to peace and hadn't, hadn't come to peace, peace at with all. God before hadn't come to peace yeah. at all no. yeah um, let's open the phone lines. Uh, maybe you, I've got more text messages here and we're trying to get through more. Um, but maybe you've got questions either on this whole area of spiritualism and mediums that we've been talking about here. Or maybe you, you have some real serious questions about Halloween that you still uh, need to ask. Then do come on 0208. 972-1408-0208-972-1408 and we'll be glad uh, to hear from you and take as many calls as we can uh, between now and the end of the show. Um, here's one. Uh, Hi, can you tell me if there is a link when a lady comes into my home who dabbles with occult things, uh, who dabbles with the... Oh, sorry. Okay, I'll read that again. How can you... Can, tell me if there's a link when a lady comes into my home who dabbles with the occult, things start to go wrong, i.e. I had something electrical blow uh, up which wasn't even plugged in. Yes. Yeah. Uh, both nodding their heads. A familiar yeah. spirit's been yeah. left. Yeah, 
Yeah. <coughs> and what what does she do about it? Well, she needs to pray and she needs to take authority over her home and she needs to claim that home for Jesus Christ and basically say that these things are not welcome there. They don't have authority or right to be there and to ask them to leave. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Anything to add there, Laura? I think perhaps the, the woman who's visited, there may be maybe needs to have a chat with that woman and yeah. explain and it might not be possible to ask her to stop coming she might be a relative and you know you might not want to do that but it's maybe worth talking to that woman mm -hmm. as well mm -hmm. and, and and don't fear I, I mean if any of the things that we talk about here today anything that haven't please do not be fearful in your home because you know the, the, telling you now that you have a familiar spirit may suddenly you know ah, what do i do about it if you've got problems please do uh, make contact with us we can we can pray with you we can find somebody to to help you the one thing that we don't want you to do is fear because the the enemy wants us to fear because fear um, binds us up fear causes that so that we can't move and we can't do things God releases so we can pray so we can worship so we can walk in his goodness and in his life so please don't fear and if there is fear you need prayer uh, do uh, make contact with us and, and, and we will help you in, in, in every way that we can Doug regarding electricity electricity is an energy and people who walk in that way have energy as well so that's quite often the energy of electricity TVs and things like that, sometimes get disrupted by mm -hmm. the energy that's come into the into the home okay okay interesting uh, good afternoon Doug Michael and Laura um, in Luke 11 it says seven spirits more wicked than the first does this mean that there is a spirit league table as uh. it were <laughs> it's a great question it's a great question yes. I'm, not, I'm not sure there is a simple complete uh, direct answer but uh, well, what, what do you think well what, what we're talking about we're talking about a spirit being cast out and then having to put your house in order as Laura said getting rid of the regalia getting rid of all the things that maybe attracted the spirit in the first place with regard to a league table we're getting into areas of territorial demons and high ranking spirits strongholds dominions that sort of thing the idea of the spirit the spirit that has been in that home and has been in that person is used to being there he doesn't want to be evicted so he would like to come back because they always look for safe things that they can move to or easy conquests so the harder you make it for them by casting them out they're going to get some backup it's a bit like the school bully when you punch him on the nose sometimes he goes and gets his mates and they wait for you outside yeah. school exactly the same principle yeah. demons work under that principle they will try and go and get people they think is a bit tougher to suppress you to terrify you and for you to give in mm-hmm mm-hmm yeah okay and, and of course ephesians 6 does yes, it, it, yes. it does talk uh, about this and I, I i'm not sure we need to know no, every no, level no, and what no. each level is but yeah it, it, it is interesting to know that there, there is a hierarchy as it were yes. there, there is an order there as well and, and satan is organized yeah. I, I think that's really what it does show it, doesn't it? it gives some of them pacific roles yeah uh, you know pacific tasks yes and uh you know they just don't some people think they just roam around and say, oh, I'll have him, I'll do him, I'll eat him, I'll do... It's not like that. It's, it, 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 it is organised. Yeah. But we're organised as well. Amen. Amen. That's what I was going to say. Yeah, do. <laughs> Ephesians 6. Exactly. Great. Please do. Re yes, re read it, because well, you've got um, it open there, yeah. Ephesians 6, verse 12, For our struggle is not against flesh Amen. and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armour of God. And it goes on to talk about the armour of God. But, yeah, I think there are different ranks and that kind of thing, but I don't think we have to get too concerned no. and study about all the different ranks no. and just be aware that that's the case. But the victory is in Christ. And I think sometimes Satan would, 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 would like us to get so tied up with all, all the, the intricate details and get yeah. so involved in it that we miss the bigger picture. Mm -hmm. That when, when we say, 
the, the work of Jesus Christ is finished and Satan was defeated at Calvary it isn't just the person called Satan that's defeated at Calvary it is all that realm mm -hmm. and, and therefore whichever realm it is and whichever uh, level it is it's all been defeated in Christ and, and I think sometimes we can get so tied up with is it this, is it that, does it do this, does it do that is this one more than that one that we miss mm -hmm. the glorious fact of what's exactly, happened. and we can get sidetracked worrying about all those things yeah. and trying to suss it all out and figure <laughs> it out, but we don't just leave it to Christ and don't focus on it too much, I think, as well. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, I was just uh, getting a message through, not from there, <laughs> but from my control room and from my producer, Kat. Uh, we've got Neona on the, fine, uh, on the phone. Good afternoon. Hello, good afternoon. I'm Leona's mum. Yes? Yeah, we were just um, actually thinking, you know, when you actually um, buy charity clothes or second-hand clothes that's been given to you. Right. If those previous people have uh, been involved in the occult, would that affect you on your children? I've heard, but I'm not sure if it's true. Okay, uh, it's a good question. I'm sure many people sit and worry about that. Michael, what do you say? When I first came into ministry, the first preaching engagement I had, I couldn't afford a suit. I was quite poor. So I actually went to a charity shop and bought a suit to wear. But what I did do is I blessed it, I <laughs> covered it, and I cancelled anything that may have gone before and the characteristics of the gentleman who had the suit before me I wasn't affected by it certain things we have to be careful of I actually spent some time working in a charity shop once and opened up a bag a black bag of clothing and found Freemasonry regalia there and the lady who ran the charity shop said how much shall we get for this and when she wasn't wa watching I tied it up and we chucked it away yeah. so certain things that have a uh, shall we say an oath an area of oath that have been sworn over and used for a certain thing we have to be careful of but you know second hand clothes well thank god for charity shops <laughs> that's what i say because they clothe a lot of our less yes. fortunate people I, I i think the thing also here is this that even if there is nothing on 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 that suit or on those clothes if i am concerned about it it just needs to be laid to rest Right. And therefore, to me, there is, I, I don't think we need to make a big thing of it, but I think there's nothing wrong, as, as, as Michael just said there, of blessing it, of committing it to the Lord, thanking the Lord for d d giving it to you so cheap, etc., and really just taking uh, that place in Christ so that you're, you just feel free. You're, you're, you're not being over-spiritual, you're not being nuts about it, but you're just able to walk in the Lord that way. Thank you. Okay. Thank Bless you. you. Thank you. Bye. Go, bye now. Thank bye you. Bye. Um, and and uh, good afternoon, Irene. Hello. Hi there. What can we do for you? Um, I just like to uh, say that it was about five years ago. I went to a spiritualist church. Right. Um, and I had to leave then two weeks ago. Right. And um, I just wanted to say that I don't have to leave then two weeks ago. Right. And I just wanted to say that I don't have to leave then two weeks ago. Right. Uh, so I got uh, I got led to go to the library for some reason, and I got this book. I can't remember where it is now, but it was it was showing how, how dangerous the occult is. I believe that that guard at the time led me to the book. Uh, and then I had I had um, like I just had this desire that I needed to change the house. I wanted to move, and I don't I didn't know why. And I went to um, a local estate agent there and she come to me and she didn't know and I was like thinking bungalow, I want a bungalow not a no stairs and she come to me and she said oh we've got a bungalow here mm -hmm. go and look at it so when I looked at this house this fella pulled up in a car and it was next door but one to this bungalow and it's actually one of the spiritualists who live next door but one okay, to what, can, can I ask you what it, has this all been dealt with? I, I just don't want to dwell on what has happened. We want to now dwell on what Christ can do. Yes. So ha has that all been dealt with? Or are you saying, I need this dealt with? What I'm saying is, I'm trying to explain that it's dangerous. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Right. Uh, they, they can get you trapped right. on in. And the Lord showed me, look, this is wrong. 
Right, but since then you've come to know the Lord and it's all been dealt with fully. Well, I've repented of it and I, I don't go to these kind of things anymore. Great, great. That, 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 yeah, that's the point I wanted to get to. That's, uh, yeah, that, but that's the, the point is sometimes I think when things go wrong in my life, I'm thinking, am I still safe? Mm -hmm. Even though I've repented of it. Mm. Are they still trying to come, come at me? Okay, let, let me just pick up. I mean, first of all, Lord, did you ever have that that problem of, of thinking, you know, is, am I all right now after all I've been through? Yes, even for quite a while after I was a Christian, I still, if, if things happened, even just natural, normal things, I would perhaps read into it a little bit and worry and think, is this because of what I was involved in? And I would go to my pastor and explain, and, and she would say, Laura, that's all been dealt with, and Satan will try and just make you worry about mm -hmm. these things, and, and you know he's just trying to upset you and worry you, and, and just pray about it, you know, to, to to put your mind at rest. But it's just really the worries mm -hmm. of, of the enemy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What what advice would you give, Michael? I think we spoke before, haven't we, Irene? Yeah. Yeah, I thought we had. Yeah. I remember, as I said to you before, one of the things we have to do when we come out of a certain belief system is there is scripture in the Bible about the transforming of the mind. Ah. That we have to move forward and start learning new things and asking the Lord to teach us new things. If you've taken the awesome step of accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Saviour, you've done that because you wish to move forward. And you know the Bible said, Behold, I do a new thing. The older things are passed away believe Irene that the older things are passed away and when these coincidence and sometimes things happen just because of coincidence don't dwell on them and believe that you're under attack look at it and move on to the next mm. step in your Christian development mm. yeah we told you often before that's what needs to happen yeah. go for it I, do, I mean you, you have helped me a lot I'm feeling that peace and I yeah a great there. Leave, leave the past behind and walk on in Christ. Yeah. Thank you. Bless you. Bless Thanks you for your call. Bye now. Uh, Maria. Good afternoon, Maria. Oh, good afternoon, Doug. Um, I'm just watching your program and uh, I bought a Bible in a second hand shop right. a while ago and it is um, it's the Concordian St. John's Lodge of Fidelity. I think it's the Mason's Bible. Yes, it is. Yes. I'm wondering yes. if I should uh, put it in the bin or something like that. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, 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 I would. Month, yeah. Along with my other Bibles, because I do buy them. Yeah. 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 No, I, I think, yeah, again, it is not necessarily that there is anything to do with that. But, you know, as, as we've often said on this program before, yeah. and, you know, we don't hate Freemasons and there's yeah, some so very nice people. Yeah, it's got but, a lot of signatures and everybody's... Yeah, it, 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 the two things are not compatible. <laughs> okay, I, I, I would be, I, I, I would felt funny about throwing a Bible in a bin. <laughs> no. But that would Good, no, I, I would, not that one. No. Okay. Okay, Maria. Thank you very much. Bless you. Bye -bye. Thank you. Bye, -bye. Bye for now. Um, Reggie, good afternoon, Reggie. Good afternoon, my brother. I just want to make reference to uh, the guy that rang in. He said about the seven spirits coming back worse, uh, worse off. Okay, yeah. The, the main thing is is that the I, I find for believers, um, you know, if, if, if they've got something in them, uh, yeah, that's fine to get rid of them because getting rid of demons is not difficult. It's holding them out. But if they're unbelievers, I don't believe it's wise uh, to be casting out any any demons out of any unbeliever until they have a knowledge of the love of Jesus. Mm -hmm. um, because that that's the protection. So we you need to have wisdom. Yeah, you know, with these things yep. because that's where it gives us instruction. Uh, you know, if uh, if you do that and seven words comes back in, they're in a worse state. Yep. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So that's what the, the yep. scripture. Uh, no, Reggie, we I, I know we've said that yes, often. Yes. We haven't said it today. So thank you very much for for rigging up and making that point. It is so important because if you do kick something out, there is a vacuum there. And, and and something, someone spiritual has to fill that vacuum. That's it. God yeah. bless you, my brother. Yeah, bless you, Reggie. Bless you, Thank you for that. Okay, um, no more calls at the moment, so let's go back to the emails. Um, hi, Doug. This is from Emma. 
Um, greetings to your guests in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm so pleased uh, they are. Oh, this is one of these emails that goes off the. Um, hang on a minute. Goes off the, uh, it goes off the screen. Yeah. Um, uh, that they uh, that they mm, share these things with us. I am not very knowledgeable in these things. However, I have a cousin who believed in karma. Please, can you explain to me what is karma? You mentioned it, so you're going to explain it. And the other experience you mentioned, it starts with the letter P. Now, I'm not sure whether she means reincarnation. I know that doesn't start with P. I can't think of anything else you said with P. But let's start with karma. What What is karma? Karma is, is really, um, it stems from Eastern religions and philosophies. But spiritualists do believe in it as well. Not all of them do, but a lot of them do a lot of new agers and psychics now believe in it all as well and it basically just means they believe that um, when you die you don't go to heaven or hell as the bible says but rather you go through a process of reincarnations where you keep coming back to this earth and repay your karma if you did bad things in the last life you'll come back again and try and ease the balance so to speak try and do some more good things to ease the balance but the problem with karma is you'll spend eternity trying to yeah. work for the, the sins you committed and you can never work for them only Christ can forgive them Amen yeah. Amen yeah and, and presumably I, I, I can't think of anything you said with the letter P but certainly reincarnation obviously is the process of coming back to another life and I know people believe in different forms of life but whatever form of life coming back to another life um, in as you say in order to pay off the debt that you had in the first life but what always makes me you know you know and, and I always talk to people that believe in karma in this if you had a debt in the first life you know how much are you going to have in the second life and the yes. third and you're never ever as you say going to pay it off it's only ever going to get worse yeah. because we all do more bad things than good in o o over a lifetime and unless christ steps in and, and one of the glorious things i always say to people that believe in karma and reincarnation i say to them if you at the end of this lifetime if there if you knew a man that said to you I will pay all your karma mm -hmm. when you die so that it will perfectly balance so you can go off to your nirvana in the sky. I said, you would have a totally oh. different view of what would happen next time. You know? yeah. And they all say, yeah. I said, well, now you know what Christians feel like. Yes, yes. Of, course we, of course we're excited about the eternal. Because that debt has, yes, I've got debt. We don't call it karma, we call it sin. But if, if whether you want to call it karmic debt or sin or whatever, we have a debt we could never pay. But we know a man who paid that debt. Amen. You know? And so, yes, we can be free. So I always encourage them to, 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 to see that and, and, and begin to introduce them to, to, to Christ that way. I know in transcendental meditation and teachings of the East like that, and the Beatles got involved in that heavily yeah, in the, the late 60s, yeah. George Harrison and John yeah. Lennon. They used to speak of people having good karma and bad karma. Yeah. Of course, that was explaining where they were in the reincarnation chain and how far they'd gone. Uh, it's, it's good what Doug said about the debt, because I know my debt's been paid, and Hallelujah. if you could weigh it in gold, <laughs> <laughs> awful lot. Yeah. Yeah, 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 but it's great, isn't it? Yeah, and, and and that's that doesn't just make oh, it doesn't matter what we do because our debt's paid. Because our debt is paid, we are so grateful to Amen. the one who paid the debt. Amen. The year we do still sin, but we want to serve him because of what he's done. And and of course, with karma and that sort of teaching, it does rely on good works. Yes, mm. the mm. thing that the Bible speaks not of. Of course, we do good works when we're born again mm. because we wanna. Uh, be good to all people and love our mm. fellow brothers and sisters but you can't get into heaven as we know with good work so Amen. karma won't get that's you right. into heaven that's right absolutely um the the, the lady um with the grandson we were talking about as as, as uh, texted back uh, just to text you about my grandson in the army quarter okay yes. she, says, she is in spain and he is in germany right how do I protect him? Sorry for not making this clear. You know, you said going and spending time, obviously they can't on a regular basis. Um, I, I, I guess it's prayer and prayer and prayer, isn't it? And praying at the time when he's 
when yeah. he is going to bed and things yes. like that. Yes, I mean, is there an hour difference still between... Not Spain and Spain, not Spain and Germany, and Germany they're the same. same. Yeah. Well, you see, I don't think that the power of God has any distance and can't, can't be contained or kept anywhere. So if someone lives in Australia, you can pray for them at a certain time. Yeah. And I think that uh, the Holy Spirit, which is omnipotent, omnipresent, can be anywhere yeah. to answer the call. So yeah. it, I don't think distance it matters at all. Yeah. No, and even pray over the phone if you can. Yes, yeah, that's, that's people it. People can receive pray over the phone. Yeah. Even healings over the phones. So yeah. Yeah. Pray over Amen. the phone. Or make Amen. a make a, a prayer tape up and play it to the little boy before he goes to sleep. Now, what night. do you mean by that? It's a wonderful phrase, but half the people out there say, "What nuts are you talking well, about?" I, I, you know, you could make a little tape up if you've got a little tape recorder yeah. of some prayers or some psalms, oh, right. okay. and pray it to the little boy as he goes to, he sleep. Goes to sleep. Better than the best bedtime story there is. Right. Amen. Amen. Um, you got yourself into hot water. Have I? Yeah. You talked about adding or taking away. Yes. Right? Uh, and, and this is, uh, this goes back. It's not to add or take away <coughs> from. Oh. I, I think he's put too many knots in here, but I'm just no, trying no. to read it. I think what he's actually saying it's to add or take away from the book of Revelation, not the Bible. Question mark. Maybe he's not making a, a no, statement. No. He, I, may, I, I read it as though he was. You know, yes. having to go at you. No, he's he's asking the question because those verses come. Uh, that verse comes at the end of the book of mm. Revelation. That's it. Therefore, is it just to add or take away from the book of Revelation, or is it the Bible? Well, no. The book of the, 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 it says about the prophecies in the book of Revelation, and it also says about us receiving the plagues mentioned in the book of Revelation. If we add or take away from the words of this book, what I was re relating to was the Book of Mormon. Yes. That's right. what I was relating to. That is an add-on to the Bible. That's actually saying, well, okay, the Word of God is not sufficient. We need this as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We need to speak about the latter-day saints, the saints to come, and we need to speak about these things that were revealed to Joseph Smith. Could, could yeah. I just add something yeah, to that do. as well? S similar to that, whether it's Mormonism, whether it's there's yeah. even Christian spiritualism, spiritualists who feel they're Christians and that they are yes. in direct contact with mm. Christ as a spirit guide. It reminds me of the verse um, 2 Corinthians chapter 11, 21. If someone preaches another Jesus Amen. or yes. another, if you receive a different spirit or a different gospel, you may well put up with that. And there's other verses as well. Even if an angel comes to you and tells yeah. you a different gospel or about a different Christ, don't mm. don't listen. It's two Corinthians eleven four actually. Two Corinthians yeah. yeah, so eleven four, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but the, the the old business about add ons to the Christian faith. Surely if there were going to be add ons to the Christian faith, Jesus would have told us yeah. about them. Yes. Uh, the old argument about you know, forgive me, I'm not having to go out now. A Muslim saying that the Holy Spirit is the comforter and the comforter is Muhammad. The Bible doesn't say that. That's right. The, so, the, I mean, you know. other people can say it, but yes. if, we, if, if we accept the scriptures, not say it. The other thing, we've got another course, so I'll just go to them. But the other thing that I always say is when the book of Revelation was written, which is supernatural book by, right. by, by the... Nobody knew it was going to be the last book of the Bible. No. Um, and also those verses do come similar in Deuteronomy. Yes. Um, and therefore, I, I think it's very clear. But no other book. You see, no, nothing else do we say in the Bible. That, that, that's only for that bit there. We take it as the whole word of God. So to me, it, it, it is the whole word of God. Yeah, no, I think whole. it's very dodgy to start adding things onto Absolutely. the Bible. Yeah, we, we, we mustn't add or take away from the book of Revelation. No. We, we can do it anywhere else. I don't think that's what, 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 what the guy no, was no. saying, but I know some yeah. people would say that. Uh, Beryl, good afternoon, Beryl. Good afternoon, Doug. Um, Hi there. We found your program very interesting. Thank you. But um, there seems to be one missing link. Um, you've not really mentioned the Holy Spirit uh -huh. um, this afternoon. You've talked about lots of other spirits, but the scripture does say quite clearly that, that we must be receive the Holy Spirit. When you first believe, it says, have you, have you received the Holy Spirit? Yep. And if, if people um, haven't received the Holy Spirit, then these wrong spirits will continue dwelling in them because they can't, they, they, 
if Jesus is living within us, and once we're born again, once we've received his Holy Spirit, we have that power within us, and and wrong spirits cannot dwell yes. with the Holy Spirit then. No, I, I, I think... I think we've said that to agree, maybe not quite in in those terms, and 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 I'll accept that. Um, mm. But I think I think the other thing to add on there, and, and and you said it, Laura, when when you receive Christ, and of course in receiving Christ, it has to be a work of the Holy Spirit, because there's no other way that Christ can come and and and, and live within. Um, that there was a measure of deliverance, but there were still other things that 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 that, that needed to be done at a later date, and and, and therefore there there was a, a progression that needed to take place sometimes in seeing uh, what God had done for you. Yeah, yeah. I perhaps I forgot to mention that um, I did obviously receive the Holy Spirit, and um, even with the signs accompanying speaking in tongues and that kind of thing, I just forgot to to mention that so definitely the yeah. Holy Spirit is yes. pivotal and yeah we wouldn't want to forget him at all no <laughs> he, I mean he's part of the Godhead and you know you you, you cannot divorce him um, from uh, f from what the Father and the Son are doing because he is the one it says in John's Gospel that takes of what the Father and Son it says and, and reveals it to us yeah yeah, yeah. bless yeah. you okay. thank you for that reminder thank you Beryl okay. indeed bye, -bye. bye. Um, hi Doug and guest, uh, guests, um, I've suffered nearly all my life with chronic anxiety. I'm very embarrassed to talk about things. I'm 45 years old. I feel my life is cursed uh, and passing me by. Can you help me please? Your life doesn't necessarily uh, need to be cursed or is not cursed anxiety many people suffer with anxiety many successful people people even in churches suffer with anxiety i've suffered anxiety myself when i've gone to a meeting and 15 minutes after the start of the meeting there's no one there you know that's some things like that bring anxiety on anxiety is part of the fear that we have about our lives and you know we can pray for these things but please do not think that there's curses on your life because you feel anxious uh, it doesn't necessarily mean there is so please uh, look to pray for your fear and pray for your anxiety and as the last caller said invite the Holy Spirit in to deal with that problem but please don't think you're cursed because you're going into areas which will naturally bring anxiety and fear mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and and if you need further help please contact the office and get our details look on the website and get our details and uh, and and we may be able to uh, to, to find somebody that can, can, can walk with you through these things the, and and I, I I know I'm gonna upset some people but then I spend most of my life doing that so do um, but you know sometimes God doesn't deliver us from something but he delivers us in something yes yes exactly. and therefore even if God doesn't take away all of that personality that, that's anxious that but that which is excessive will be and and, and God will give grace to be yes. able to cope with the situation well the word of God said my grace is sufficient yeah. and his grace is sufficient uh, many many Christians have underlying problems now people can think that maybe they're demon possessed because they have, have underlying problems I've always found that's incorrect some people have problems because they have problems and God gives them the grace to live their ordinary lives worshiping the Lord and receiving God's blessings uh, but the grace is sufficient to see them through those problems and mm -hmm. that's the best way I can explain it mm -hmm. I mean, this is something which I know you, you, you have to, it's very real to you, isn't it? Um, you know, in, 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 in God giving you grace to live every day. Yeah, and, and I think sometimes we, we, we can get worried about areas in our life that we have still to overcome in Christ, and we can perhaps panic about them and really worry about them. But I think it's it's key to also hold on to the fact that often, you know, the scripture does mention as well that, that Christ delivers us a bit at a time mm -hmm. little by little step by step so we may not have a full um, healing or, or whatever you want to call it full liberty from anxiety 
straight away, but it could be something that will take a bit of time and will maybe even gradually improve as, mm -hmm. as time goes on and as Christ moves. So mm. it's not always an instant healing or an instant cure, but until that does happen, the grace is there for you. Amen. To and it's trusting him, isn't it? I, I mean, it really is trusting him that he knows what he's doing, he knows what's, and his grace is sufficient. Amen. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, we, we trot that out because it's such a well-worn yes, phrase yes. and we stick it on the wall and, you yes, know, we, yes. and gold lettering and all that. But the reality of that in our lives every day is so important that what am I facing today? His grace is sufficient. Now, whether I know it or not is not the issue. He, at this point, his grace is sufficient and he wants me to know it. I've always found that sometimes Christians have a problem when bad things happen to them. Sometimes they think, well, I'm born again, that shouldn't happen to me. Uh, God's never promised us a rose garden. He's promised to be there with us, to lift us up, to carry us. Uh, it's a bit like the, the famous footsteps in the sand. That's right. That he was there all along. We just didn't feel his presence. So I believe that when we are born again and filled with the Spirit, God's presence is there with us. Sometimes he, he brings us up and toughens us up by just moving away from us a little bit so we trust less in ourselves and more in him mm, mm. Um, one final email maybe before I just share a little bit about uh, future programs uh, hi Doug and guess what about second hand rings well second hand rings uh, are a little bit difficult because usually there's a covenant maybe been used now I do know from people who have given rings to people in the occult sometimes they use that ring as a point of contact mm. so they can send stuff to them so they have authority over them so we have to be very careful i believe with second hand not only rings items of jewelry because they may have had covenants sworn over them uh, they may be used for various occult practices we're not to know so i would be very careful buying second hand jewelry personally mm -hmm. But again, that, that those things can be broken. Surely, they can be broken. Certainly. Yeah, yeah, certainly. Yes. I think the thing is with jewellery, uh, you know, it's like a lot of things. It's the not knowing, mm -hmm. and you know, we yeah, gradually right, think yeah. with jewellery, oh, oh, oh yeah. rings as, uh, as a warlock or a witch worn this ring. Yeah. And that sort. We mustn't think like that. But we we should just be aware that we need to pray over things and break anything that's there, right. and ask God to do it for us. Right. Right. I guess it's d discernment and wisdom as well. You could get yeah. a ring, it's perfectly fine. You could get one and it's cursed and it's just yeah. really yeah. Yes. having that discernment and wisdom. And, and it's the same as that because people talk about the ornaments in their house and, 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 and it's so easy to go throw away anything that looks a little bit grotesque and 90% of them are probably fine. But, yes. but it, is, it, it, it is that wisdom and it is being sensitive to the Lord and if the Lord is saying something that... Then, then, then we do go on and, and do it and we do get rid of, of, of these things and it's being aware of that, isn't it? I've always believed now, after being a Christian, a proper Christian, for 12 years, that I have to give everything to God. Mm. Because when I try and do things for myself and make my own decisions on what I believe my intelligence tells me, I'm, I'm inevitably wrong. Right. So I pass it all on to the <laughs> <Lord>. <laughs> That's the safest way. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's, no, yeah. That's sitting on the fence. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> let me uh, let me share a bit, and I'll come back to you. and Have a minute or two each to um, say all that you wanted to say and haven't said yet. So, but yeah. uh, folks, but uh, uh, can I just invite you, please, first of all, tonight um, uh, to join us uh, for a further program on the whole pagan witch. Uh, Christian debate. We've got a pagan witch and we've got a Christian coming in and we're going to share the reality of Christ over that and we're going to be finding out why one doesn't believe and why one does and, uh, and do please uh, join us uh, for uh, that time tonight nine o'clock um, and you may want to have real input into that please uh, be there be on time be ready to email uh, and text in uh, straight away um, if uh, there are things that uh, over the whole occult realm all that we've been talking about are a problem to you you may want uh, to a little more help on that do uh, uh, be aware that on Sunday evening 10 30 to 12 30 uh, I'll be here on voice in the wilderness and you can come and share some of these issues with us at, at that time so please uh, do uh, 
uh, be uh, alive to that. We, we want to make those times where we can share and communicate and help people. Next week, it's the 5th of November. So be prepared for fireworks because my old mate JT is back as one of my guests, John Tancock from South Wales. You love him or you hate him. And, and also John Cuthbert that hasn't been with me uh, uh, for quite a while. He's coming back as well. And we're going to look at the whole area of destination after Earth. Okay, is there a heaven, is there a hell, is it eternal, is it not, what happens, should it happen, how can it be, etc, etc, etc. So that's next Thursday, uh, 1 o'clock here on Genesis. Please don't miss it, that's going to be a great time, and all the classics, etc, um, uh, go on uh, at that time. What would you want to share with folks uh, in a sort of a final minute or so conclusion, Lord? just to, to really sort of a sum up what, what we've all said so far that, that we're not wanting to dwell on Satan or demons or, or Halloween we want to glorify Christ and lift his name up high but these things do need to be, be shared but we mm. don't, don't dwell on them um, and, and really just just to thank him for saving each of us and bringing us out of what, whatever we have been um, involved in and, and just a, a gentle warning to Christians because I've discovered there's some Christians that are going to Christian spiritualists right. because they think it's Jesus and just to emphasise that it's not Jesus and, and not to go to, to those meetings. Mm -hmm. And we know it's not Jesus because the Bible tells us, but also because of some mediums who have come out of that and found the real Jesus and discovered that was a false one. Mm -hmm. and, and, and so it, it is important, as you say, as, as a loving warning, but you know, we want to say to people, yeah, potentially from your experience these things are dangerous please please check them out that's very much what we're saying isn't it absolutely yeah yeah, yeah great and, and and you can get laura's testimony um in detail if you phone up the office or look on the web page uh, tomorrow or the next day we'll have all the details of where uh, you uh, can obtain it there's the details of the web page uh, where you can find it and it's on, it's on the revelation website simply the truth page and you'll be able to look at her testimony check things out for yourself michael what would you like to say well i'd just like to reiterate as i always do that we have authority over these things we needn't fear uh, we can get a bit scared from time to time as all of us do but as long as we go back to the cross we go back to calvary and we go back to the very very ultimate truth that jesus christ is lord not just lord over our lives but lord over all lives for those who accept him so please do not be frightened this halloween or ever frightened again because you have a savior who will set you free from this fear mm. and 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 that's it and we that that is important that message and people need to ask for help and not be fearful sometimes people are oh, well i mean you know that they're gonna think it's silly no. okay maybe we do think it's silly but we're still gonna help them because yes, because course. even if it may sound silly to us it's not silly to them is it because it's a real problem well the thing is if if it scares you a little bit you're a little bit perturbed it's important to you and god wants you to put before him the things that are important to yeah. you it's not silly at all yeah Great guys, thank you so thank much you. Uh, for for being with us. I, I've really enjoyed these past two hours. I enjoy most two hours yes, on the yes. Thursday afternoon. It's really it's really been great, and I'm sure we're uh, uh, we'll meet up again uh, in, uh, in 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 the near future. Thank you, Dad. as thank well. You. So thank you, yes. and uh, be blessed. Um, ensure that you are safe and you are secure. You know who Christ is. Um, at this time of year don't go for that which is done go for the real see you later the lord bless you real good <laughs>